Once upon a time, there were two sisters named Cherry and Laura. Cherry was a lovely young lady who cared about everyone around her. Laura was mean-spirited and only cared about herself. Cherry was stunningly beautiful. She had long golden hair that everyone who saw her was jealous of. Laura couldn't compete with Cherry's beauty, and she hated her for it. One day, their mother got sick and died. The two girls and their father were heartbroken. Over time, their father met someone new and she became the girl's stepmother. She was cruel and didn't treat the girls fairly. Cherry, you need to clean the house while me and Laura go to sit outside. Can't I have some help, please? We're busy. It takes a lot out of us looking this beautiful. We need time to relax. You'll never be as beautiful as us. That's why you have to do all of the work. That's right, Cherry. I got the good looks and the good luck. You just got the right to work. The stepmother was wrong, though. Cherry was the most beautiful girl in the whole land. It didn't matter how dirty she was from work. Cherry did her work and made sure the house was clean. When her father got home from work, she decided to tell him what happened. Father, Laura and our stepmother made me do all of the housework while you were at work. They just sat outside and left me to do it all. Is that true, you two? No, father. You know what Cherry's like. She just likes to tell lies. How could you think I would do that? I treat these girls as if they were my own. I love them like my own flesh and blood. Cherry, I'm hurt you would lie about me like that. Cherry, what have I told you about telling lies? Go to your room without supper. I won't have any lying in my house. The girl's father was a good man at heart. But he'd been taken in by the cruel nature of his eldest daughter and new wife. Cherry spent the evening in her room, hungry and sad that she was stuck in such a horrible situation. The next day, the stepmother was a lot more cheerful when the girls woke up. Girls, I have a game for you. I want you to both go and catch as many fish as you can for our meal this evening. Whoever catches the most will get a reward. Go now. The two girls started to leave the room when the stepmother grabbed Laura's arm and pulled her back. I'm trusting you to make sure that she doesn't win. Understand? I understand. The two girls went out to fish, and by the end of the day, Cherry had caught twice as many fish as Laura. The two girls were on their way back to the house when Laura started to scream. Ah! Look! They're in the woods! It's a wolf! Where? I can't see it. Right there! Go and check, quick! As Cherry went towards the woods to look at what Laura had pointed at, Laura quickly took all of Cherry's fish and ran back to the house, leaving an empty bucket for Cherry. Cherry came back from the woods after finding nothing to see an empty bucket. She picked it up and went home as fast as she could. Why did you steal all of my fish? I had twice as much as you did. Stop telling lies again, Cherry. It's all you ever do. I've had enough of this, Cherry. Because you couldn't be bothered to help collect our meal, you will only be allowed the vegetables. No fish for you. That's not fair. I caught most of that fish. Laura stole it from me. Cherry, please stop telling lies. I would believe you if you didn't lie so often. They are lying about me, father. I promise you. Cherry looked into her father's eyes. She could tell that he was conflicted. He wanted to believe his daughter, but at the same time he couldn't not believe his other daughter and his new wife. Just eat your vegetables, Cherry. Later that evening, a messenger arrived in the village. He shouted at the top of his voice so that everyone could hear. The prince was to have a party in order to find a wife. All of the girls in the village would be invited to the greatest party they had ever seen. The two girls were incredibly excited. I'm going to wear my best dress. Me too. I'm going to curl my hair as well. I don't think Cherry should be allowed to go. Not after her lies recently and refusing to catch any fish. I think you're right. She should stay at home. What? But that is so unfair. I haven't done anything. Don't shout at us. Go to your room. <laughs> you don't get to go to the party. I'm going to marry the prince and make you be stepmother's servant. Cherry ran to her room and cried. This would be her only chance to meet the prince. She didn't think he would choose her as a wife, but she thought it would have been nice to have at least met him. As she cried, suddenly a wizard passed by her bedroom. He entered the room and said, Why are you crying, young lady? My stepmother and sister have been lying about me. 
I'm not allowed to go to the prince's party because of their lies. I can feel in your soul that you're truthful. I will cast a spell on your dress to turn it into a beautiful ball gown so that you can sneak out and go to the party. The spell will run out when the moon is at its peak, so make sure that you are home before then. What if my sister recognizes me? I will cast a spell to hide you from your sister. Don't worry, young lady. As long as you are back before the moon hits its peak, then no one will ever know that you were even gone. The wizard cast his spell with a huge flash, and Cherry's dress was transformed into the most gorgeous ball gown anyone had ever seen. She climbed out of her bedroom window and ran to the palace. When she arrived, she saw that there was a queue of girls waiting to dance with the prince. She knew she would never get to the front by the time the moon hit its peak. So she concentrated on having a good time. She was surprised when she saw the prince walking towards her. Excuse me, but please may I have the pleasure of this dance? Your Majesty! Oh, of course! I would love to dance with you! The two danced through a number of songs. Cherry could feel the other girls in the ballroom staring at her because she was the most beautiful girl at the party. They danced and talked, and she had never felt so close to anyone in her life. She looked up at the sky and saw the moon about to reach its peak. I'm so sorry. I have to go. Right now. Wait, come back. Cherry ran away through the crowds. The prince tried to follow her, but the hordes of young girls in the ballroom closed in around him and stopped him getting through. Cherry managed to get home just as her dress changed back to her old clothes. She entered the house and went to sleep. A strange mix of happy that the prince liked her, but sad that she would never see him ever again. The next day, Cherry woke up and saw that her stepmother was in her room. Cherry started shouting straight away. What's going on? What are you doing to me? The prince had a party last night and a girl ran away from it. Now he is looking for a girl with golden hair. I'm going to cut off your hair and make it into a wig for Laura. She will marry the prince and you will stay here as my servant forever. Laura moved towards her with the scissors and cut off Cherry's hair. All that remained was short hair on her head. Laura put a hat on Cherry's head. Put that hat on. We can't have anyone seeing your hair. When the prince arrives, just sit down and stay quiet. When father finds out about this, he won't be happy. Laura will be at the palace by the time your father is home from work. Then I will just tell him that you cut your own hair off because you were jealous of the prince choosing Laura. As Laura and the stepmother made the wig, Cherry sat in the room sobbing. There was a knock at the door. The stepmother opened it, saw it was the prince, and invited him in. Oh, do come in, your majesty. I heard you were looking for a young lady with golden hair, just like my stepdaughter here. Oh, wow. That is her. The long flowing golden locks that enchanted me all of last night. As the prince moved closer to stroke the wig on Laura's head, his heavy hand knocked the wig off her head. A wig? You try to fool me? Where did you get the hair to make this wig? It was the wig I wore last night. I just wore it again now so that you would recognize me. The prince noticed Cherry sat in the corner. The hat on her head didn't look right to him. He spoke loudly. The girl I danced with last night was not wearing a wig. You there, go in the corner. The prince called on Cherry, who was still sat trying to control her sobs. Would you remove your hat for me? Cherry stood up and slowly removed the hat from her head. She was scared of what her stepmother and sister would do to her, but she also knew that this could be her only escape. What remained of her golden hair shone as the hat was removed. The prince broke out into a huge grin that was followed by an angry frown. They did this to you? Just to try and fool me? Yes, your majesty. I will not have any future wife of mine being mistreated in such a disgusting way. You two shall be my servants and carry out all of the yard work on the palace grounds for the rest of your lives. Every day you will see your sister and stepdaughter and treat her as the princess. With the respect you should have done all this time. Does that mean you want to marry me? Where are my manners? It would make me eternally happy if you would do me the honor of giving me your hand in marriage. Oh yes, yes, of course I will. 
You're the greatest man that I have ever met. I would love to marry you. And so Cherry and the prince were happily married, and her stepmother and sister finally had to carry out the work that they had forced Cherry to do for all of the previous years. Hi, I hope you liked the story. Please write what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, turn the notification bell on so you can get a notification every time we post a new video.